Hello, Mina, and welcome again to another edition of the Data Innovation Summit here in Stockholm. We are really pleased to have you again with us. So, um, before you. we go on, <laughs> can you please just tell us about a bit more about yourself and your background, area of expertise? Yes, sure. First, I would like to thank you for <laughs> such a great uh, conference. It's, it's really nice so many new insights. Great, great place to be. That's uh, nice. So I have been working with the software development for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Currently, I work as a head of development at NetEnt. So while I'm a real tech girl, pretty focused on <laughs> technology, uh, I'm also very interested in uh, innovation processes and innovation aspect. Uh, both small innovations that you can do on the product level or maybe a process levels, but also from the business perspective, how you can innovate your business model and do something differently compared to your competitions. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Mina, is disruptive innovation only or best way to innovate? No, it's very important <laughs> to emphasize that people when they're talking about innovation, all the time they're saying disruption, disruptive innovation, disruptions. And we all know that it's very difficult to disrupt and it doesn't happen so often. And uh, good news is that disruption is not the only way to innovate. There is something that is called non-disruptive creation. So instead of replacing some existing technology as it happened with a digital photography which yes. replaced that uh, former type of photography, uh, you can just uh, recognize some new need on the market and redefine that and create something new. One example is, for example, coaching profession. It didn't exist 20 years ago. Now you have uh, like professional coaches, you have uh, life coaches, you have agile coaches. So it didn't disrupt anything. It just recognized the new need of some new profession to create something new on the market and then opened a new mm -hmm. market. So you're market. saying that we can innovate without disrupting? Yes, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Okay, so how do you look at the innovation process? Mm -hmm. I would say that uh, there are two approaches how you can innovate. One thing is directional innovation. Mm -hmm. When you're innovating within your domain, the same domain, mm -hmm. for example, your telecom company or financial industry, and you are innovating just within that uh, uh, domain. Mm -hmm. But there are problems with the directional innovation because uh, if you're just adding small things, you, you are doing that incremental innovation, but you are not doing any breakthrough innovation. There is another approach that is called intersectional innovation, which is very powerful when you combine two different domains in a new way, in a completely new way. We have a lot of examples from the history, how people innovated in that way. For example, from software development, since I'm coming from that uh, uh, domain, design patterns, we got them when principles for building cities and houses were applied on uh, software development. Or lean software development, we got it when principles for, from Toyota car production were applied on software development. So we have a lot of examples how we can combine two completely different domains, find intersection between them and create something new. Good. So um, how do we connect the innovation process with business value and data along mm. with it? Yes, exactly. It's a very good question because it's very important to know when you are innovating. You should not innovate just for innovation sake. Now it's a trend to innovate. You should think that your innovation should create some business value for the company. So with the, that intersectional thinking that I'm really believing in, you should combine different domains, you can generate a lot of new ideas. But not all of them are creating value just for your company, your industry, your business. So it's very important to focus on that value creation mm -hmm. and we need data in order to validate which ideas create value. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, Mina, what is big data, data analysis, and what are the data insights mm -hmm. for you? Uh, yes, I would explain that uh, we are one uh, painting. For example, you okay. take a look at the painting, especially if you choose uh, 
painting that is done with the pointillism technique, you know, when you're putting yeah. a lot of dots and then creating objects, you can say that all data that we are collecting, it's like these dots on the picture, but they don't tell you so much, just a collection of dots. And then when you zoom out, then you can recognize on the painting that you can see maybe tree, house, lake, and it's what we are getting from data analysis. We analyze the data and then can recognize it's uh, this object or this object. Yeah. And also even machine learning, then you learn the computer and uh, how he can, uh, it can recognize the same object. But there is something missing in the whole picture for bigger innovations. It's something that is called data insight, which would be like underlying message from that picture. What painter wanted to express with this picture? You cannot get that information just by machine learning yes, yes. or data analysis. Okay, so what are the prerequisites for a successful innovation, again, from your perspective? Yes, from my perspective and Nathan's perspective also, <laughs> I think that there are four important ingredients. First is that intersectional thinking, that you are not just innovating incrementally within your domain, but try to search for other domains that you can combine with your main domain of expertise and find some new combinations. Because in that way, you can enable non-disruptive innovation, which is much easier to do than to disrupt something. Also focus on data-driven innovation. Data can tell us a lot of things. We have to collect and analyze data, but also there it's not enough. We have to have some systematic approaches to capturing such data insights like underlying message, underlying needs, what do our customers need and so on. And at NetEnt we are using Blue Ocean approach because it offers a lot of frameworks and tools for systematic, uh, uh, to, to systematically analyze the market, industry, market trends, and then you can easily gather these data insights, actionable insights. So can we increase our creativity? Yeah. Yes, definitely. Uh, as I already said, I really b believe in an intersectional thinking. So when you're innovating within your domain, you can be creative for a while, but after a while, when you're a really good expert, that expertise starts to constrain your creativity because all the time you say, oh, I'm an expert, I know this problem should be solved in this way. And then you're not taking a look at another perspective. So one thing is to start thinking intersections. Can I combine my domain with something else? And also to have a, in the team people coming from different perspectives. So to have a cross-functional teams, to have a uh, developers, engineers, but also artists working together, business people. So in order to get different perspectives on the same things, it invokes in, in, uh, innovation. <laughs> okay, and one, one last question. What is the secret recipe? Yes, so from my perspective, it's these four important ingredients. Search for <laughs> intersections, non-disruptive innovation, data-driven innovation and systematic approach to capturing actionable insights to understand the underlying needs Great. and messages. Great. Then, Amina, it was really a pleasure. Thank you very much for being with us and again being part of the Data Innovation Summit. Thank you. Thank you My very pleasure. much.